Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to talk you through an issue I've been having with the Roland TD17 KVX. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that I play this kit all the time. I really, really do enjoy it when it works. Before I get started with the issues I've been facing, I just wanna say this is based on my impressions of the kit I own and purchased. This is just on this one kit. I haven't played any other ones, so I don't know if this is how the kit is or if this is just a fault with the one I've got. Now we've got that clear, the problems I'm having are with, dun 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 dun, Ugh. this bad boy, the snare pad, the PDX-12. When I first got the kit, I set it up, I was playing, I was relatively impressed with the kit. You know, it's a, it's a mid-budget kit, it's not the cheapest, it's not the most expensive, but you do get a lot for the money. And to be honest, this snare pad was one of the appeals. It's larger than most snare pads on electronic kits. That extra size between the toms helps differentiate it and makes it more interesting and exciting to play. So that's obviously a great thing. And I'd seen generally fairly positive reviews in the videos I'd watched. My judgment of this snare was that it, it was fine, but it's not perfect. What I found was there was issues with hot spotting and kind of dull zones for triggering. So on the left and the right hand side, when you moved away from the center, the triggering would, would get very weak and almost vanish. And then the closer you got to, you know, the V drums logo at the bottom where the trigger is, obviously it, it's a hot spot. I found this pad was always best if you were consistently hitting it in the center which is, as drummers, is something that we aim to do anyway. So that was fine. I accepted that as the pad. In general, I hit in the center of the pad. That's fine. All good. I played and played and played and played, as you do, without any concerns. Then that's when the problem started. So I got the kit at the end of April 2021, and the issue started early December 2021. I was having the issue where ghost notes just weren't triggering. No quiet notes were getting picked up and it'd get, you'd start hitting at a certain velocity and then all of a sudden, all the notes would be at full velocity. There would just seem to be this barrier where it went from nothing to full. It's strange, thought maybe something's changed in the module. Went and looked at the settings. I hadn't changed anything and no matter what I did with the module, it wasn't changing. It wasn't getting any better. That led me to think, you know, this must be an issue with the pad. Something must have happened to the trigger. Or, you know, maybe there's something wrong with the head. I need to tighten up the head, loosen up the head. Maybe something's gone wrong there that's affecting the triggering. I adjusted the sensitivity. Nothing happened there. It's early December. I've had the kit for approximately 33 weeks. I play in between two and three hours a week. I don't play as much as I want to. And to be honest, there are many weeks I play less than two hours. So let's be honest, I'm in a range of around 66 to 99 hours played on this snare. Sounds like a lot of hours, but in reality, I don't think it is. You know, you've spent a lot of money on this kit. I would expect it to work flawlessly pretty much forever with the expectation I would have to replace the heads as and when they wear down, which is fine. They're, you know, wear and tear it happens. And yes, the other thing I thought about and I could have done was to try and take the whole pad apart and see if I could fix it. Two issues I had with this. Number one, if I took it apart and made the issue worse, I'm pretty sure the warranty would be void and Roland wouldn't take it back. And two, I spent all the money on this. It's not even a year old. Should I be having to take it apart and try and fix it myself? I just don't think I should. I got in touch with the company I bought it from, spent a few days going back and forth with them. They came back and said, I have to get in touch with Roland myself. That's fine. Got in touch with Roland and this started the back and forth. This lasted for 10 emails just under a month. And with every email, they'd ask you to try something different on the kit. That's fine. I get it. They want to go through all the scenarios before they accept the product back because that means they have to send me a new one. As part of this process as well, I also had to buy an SD card so I could save all my custom kits as I had to reset the module. I had made a few custom kits, that's what you do, it's part of the fun. I didn't have an SD card, I had to go buy one. It's just an inconvenience, something I wish I didn't have to do. After having to buy the SD card, I had to record videos of me playing the pad, replicating the issue. Here is that video. I 
had to send that to Roland. They could go, oh, yeah, it is broken. And they accepted it seems like a product fault and they'll replace it. But they don't have any. And they might not for another few months. But they've been kind enough to say I can keep this faulty pad until I have to send it back for the replacement, which is also going to cost me money to, you know, package it, ship it and send it back. But yeah, so I'm lucky enough to keep this faulty pad, which I'm not going to use because it's no fun to play. It's, it's rubbish. It makes playing the kit completely unenjoyable, which is obviously devastating. Spent a lot of money. I enjoy playing the drums. It's my hobby. So for now, I've got this big old snare pad that I'm not using. So I switched out one of the trusty Tom pads, one of the PDX-8s as the snare pad. But I actually like these Tom pads. They feel more reliable than the snare pad. I don't know if that's just down to the size and the triggering. It's fine for now. It's just when you've spent this kind of money on something, you just want it to work. And I just wanted to let you know, this has been my experience so far. When I get the new pad, I'll let you know if it's working. And I'll let you know if it sounds and triggers differently to the original one I had. Maybe it was just an issue with this one. Who knows? I'll let you know when I know. If you want more from me, here's a video of everything I think we need from electronic drums in 2022. Check it out.